Ugh, come on, why did they make it like this? <laughs> now, now, Grace, I'm trying to beat a world record. I have to be the fastest person to defeat Master Paku in the AWE Avatar game. But ugh, this boss is harder than playing Operation Rail and Bodocross at the same time. <laughs> huh? What's that? I already set a record? <laughs> hey, that's right! We just hit 10,000 subscribers on YouTube! That means a whole lot more to me than any world record. And we couldn't have done it without so many amazing subscribers. I think we should do something fun to celebrate this occasion. <laughs> hey, what's that? The Guinness O. Ripley Enormous Book of Curiosities, Oddities, and World Records? Hmm. I guess the sense of accomplishment from completing a personal record has filled me with the desire to complete even more. The only world record I've ever set is the one for worst singing voice. Now wasn't that exciting? I hope you all enjoyed that. That was the worst thing to ever curse my non-existent ears. Zach, please! Wake up! Speak to me! Thank you, thank you. I know, it was very good. But, hmm, I don't know about this. There are an awful lot of records to set in here. If only there was a way for me to achieve a ton of world records at a time. <laughs> What's that? There is? Oh, there's a whole game about it. Let's check it out. So in July of 2012, the Spongebob episode Squirrel Record aired on Nickelodeon. It followed Sandy as she attempted to complete a series of world records. Most of these came at Spongebob's expense. In honor of this episode, 7-2 released a collection based on it for Nickelodeon's website. Many might recognize 7-2 for making Mystery Train, another Spongebob game collection. They also made Servin' Up Seconds and Sketch It, Guess It. We just need to find out what happened to 7s 3 through 10. Or 1 for that matter. But this game had the complicated title of Guinness O. Ripley's Extreme Arcade of World Records. Yeah, that was fun having to constantly look up. But it was a compilation of arcade games that tied into the episode. Let's check it out. First of all, give the music a listen. Fitting for the arcade scenery, Spongebob is playing a game over here and this guy's just standing around. Is that Guinness O. Ripley? Wow, he sure looks different. Plankton's also jamming out. But we have six games to choose from, including one that's locked with a code. All of them are based on records from the episode, so let's start with the far left. We gotta set all the records after all. Each game is modeled after an arcade machine with graphics along the side. It's really clever. You can even see additional instructions. So this first one, Longest Tongue, is about achieving the longest tongue. Like in the episode. As Spongebob, you grab Sandy's tongue and you start running. At least he isn't trying to add Tom Kenny hot sauce this time. You either jump over obstacles or go underneath them. You have to try and get as far as you can go. When you run out of energy, you get this sound effect. General music is really good too. Great music to grab your friend's tongue and start running to. And after the game, you can print your score. You can go around and tell all your friends that you scored over 30,000 points in the longest tongue minigame in Guinness O. Ripley's Extreme Arcade of World Records. But personally, I'm not great at this game. This is one record I won't be able to get. Oh well, at least I can still get the record for most characters that hate me. <sighs> the voyage to the corner of the globe is a real trip. I'll say. I just hope the others are doing okay back at the base. So, what do you like to do for fun? Okay then. I guess we'll just sit in silence. Never mind them. At least we have reached the temple. Destiny awaits. And what might you be doing here? Master Paku, in the flesh. <laughs> I thought we'd find you here. So, you're a master of water bending, right? We kind of need your help. We're up against a really persistent foe, and we need to learn some moves that'll help us defeat them. Nothing too complicated. We've tried everything. We even summoned a demon, but it won't be here until October. And the dead is slowing. Hmm. Very well then. I shall teach you what I know. So moving on, the second game is called Buckets of Chum. 
Unlike in the episode, Sandy isn't the only one going for a world record here. In this, we control Patrick as we eat Plankton's raw chum. Plankton is shooting it from a hose and Patrick's trying to eat it. If he misses, it fills the space he's running around in. You can grab a plunger to open a drain though. You can also get a power-up to make your mouth bigger. Now that's hilarious. And this game never specifies that the chum is raw, but the record in the episode called for it to be, so I find it interesting that Plankton is going through with this. He specifically said that despite being as evil as he is, he doesn't encourage the consumption of raw chum. Not even Plankton wants to see innocents die. Let that sink in for a moment. Patrick's really wobbly, so it's hard to keep him stable as you try to catch the chum in your mouth. One power-up makes the hose stay where it is, but it hardly helps because keeping Patrick still is the real issue. But yeah, this one's a lot of fun. Might be my favorite of the six. The music's great, too. Now this next one is Cobra Milker. There are three Cobras coming out of baskets and you need to milk their fangs as they're slowly being highlighted. You can't let them glow too much or the Cobra will lunge at you. How's that for a jump scare? SpongeBob can also appear, and if you click him, he'll play his nose flute to charm the snakes. This makes them stay still and lets you milk them. The fangs glow faster as you go along, but even so, the game is really easy. I end up losing on purpose because it goes on for too long if I don't. If I had the time or the patience, I could probably set a world record with this one. Maybe it wouldn't be so bad because I could hear this really cool arcade music. Let's take our record-breaking attempts elsewhere. This is Mansion of Cards, based on that really cool Mansion of Cards Sandy made. Remember when Patrick saw them and thought he could play Solitaire by smashing them with a bat? What do you mean that's not part of Solitaire? I usually want to smash my computer with a bat after most Solitaire games. But in this, two blocks fall at a time as you try to make them land so they match with at least two other blocks with the same icon. You can rotate them as they fall. Also, Squidly's over there. I think you're in the wrong episode, me bucko. But nah, he's there because there's a Joker wild card. Dynamite also blows things up. That's usually how it works. This game trips me up because I keep expecting blocks to fall when I place them in the air. I keep forgetting they're forever attached to their partner block. At least until they're matched or the row is blown up by TNT. And listen to this music. That has a Tetris-y vibe to it. It's okay. Now here's Mega Band Ball, which is the game SpongeBob is always playing here. Must be the developer's recommendation. It's just a game of Breakout where you control Gary and bounce a ball of rubber bands at boxes. This is the third Breakout game on Nick.com to involve Gary. Was there some agreement at Nickelodeon to make Gary the star of all their Breakout games? But you can catch rubber bands for a higher score, as well as S icons that make you faster. But that doesn't make too much of a difference. I wouldn't go out of my way for them. But apparently these B ones make you bust a move. That makes me think Gary's about to get up and start dancing for us. But nah, it just makes your ball stronger. And here's the music for this one. This is alright. But as you can see, we have one game left. This one is locked behind a code, and it's a shame I can't figure it out. I sure would like to score a world record in a game called Chainsaw Juggler. That sounds awesome. Mail call. What? Ow! Hey, it's a letter. Facebook crabs? What does that have to do with- oh, it's FB crabs. Makes sense to me. So in this, you're Mr. Krabs and you're juggling chainsaws. Now there's something I can totally see him doing in the show. You move around and catch them with your big meaty claws, flinging them back up so you can juggle them. You can even make your claws bigger. And meatier. Cool music, too. This 
is pretty all right, at least until. Really, Patrick? Gosh, don't you just hate it when you're trying to juggle chainsaws and Patrick's star falls on you? But overall, not bad. This whole game collection is a lot of fun and one I enjoy going back to. I like the arcade style and the music that fits along with it. There are many details that you can notice while playing and they really heighten the experience. This is a unique take on the episode that inspired it, but still original and makes for a good time. 7-2 was an impressive company that made a lot of really good games. They were a good addition to Nickelodeon's website and I'm always glad to check out their work. They really came through with this one. I'm happy to have checked it out. But now if you'll excuse me, I do believe I started playing this because I had some records to set. I think it's time I get back to doing exactly that. So for now, I'm going to play through all of these minigames until I get the highest score for each of them. Wish me luck in my adventure. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter and Twitch, which are linked in the description below, and tune in to our next installment. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory. Hello? What is it, Joe Slammett? I'm in the middle of learning how to shoot water from my fingertips! We can do without the name calling. Look, there's been a bit of an emergency. When are you coming back? What kind of emergency? Well, uh, you see, Jess has gone missing. You're joking, right? I wish I was, but I can't find her anywhere. Darn it! I was afraid this would happen. Without the rest of us there to keep her in check, she's taking things into her own hands. I knew we shouldn't have let her stay behind. <coughs> Shut up, fluff and stuff. Listen, Joe, we'll be back right away. I hate to leave my training so abruptly, but this is a serious emergency. Hopefully, the skills I have now will be enough. Okay, please hurry back as soon as you're able. I'm scared. Come on, come on. I'm so close to getting that high score. I need to beat that record. Almost there. Just a little more. I just have to... What the... No way. Your... Your... Jess from Jumpstart Mission EarthQuest? The blood of my brother is on your hands, Lucy Lilliam. For this, you shall die. Whoa! Grace, attack! Ugh, some guard dog you are. Ah! You can't escape from me, Lucy. The thrill of vengeance runs through my veins. You can't hope to understand the strength of determination. Get away from me! Help! I'm trapped. It's the end of the line for you, Lucy Lilliam. When I'm through with you, you won't be seeing anyone in the next memory. Ugh, why did I make that my tagline? Wait, can't we talk about this? So what if my singing killed your brother? People die all the time, don't they? But please, don't come any closer. I haven't even finished reviewing all the AWE games yet. Please. It's too late to grovel, Lucy. This will be the end for you. Huh? Was that... water? Well, I really hated doing that, but business is business, I suppose. Polly? You did that? Please spare me the gratitude. It's saving you is the last thing I ever wanted to do. But why? Isn't she part of the Anti-Lucy Club? She is. But her goals don't really align with the rest of us. The Anti-Lucy Club 
only seeks to fill your life with misery and torment. She, on the other hand, wants you dead. Like, real dead. Trying to hold her back is a real chore. Oh, can't believe there's someone out there who genuinely wants me dead. That kind of stings. Well, you did kill her brother, so... yeah. That wasn't my fault. How was I supposed to- I know. I know. Oh, I know. I couldn't care less. In all honesty, he was annoying to deal with anyway. But... Hopefully this will be the last nice thing I ever do for you. I already feel all nasty about it, and I need a shower! Well, thanks anyway, I guess. <laughs> Don't thank me yet. What kind of leader of the anti lazy Club would I be if I just let you walk away from here? A very nice one? Exactly. And we just can't have that, can we? Besides... Your channel just hit 10,000 subscribers. Why don't we end your latest video by giving them a little show? A show? What do you... Oh, no. You can't possibly mean... <laughs> Say goodnight, Lazy Lilium. <sighs> Not again. Where am I this time? <sighs> Looks like I have another game to review. Come along, disgrace. <laughs> hmm. Gonna so Ripley's something something. Why do they give these games such annoyingly long titles? Who's going to remember all that? Look at this mess of a menu. Is this supposed to make me happy? This guy doesn't even belong here. I hate games that add unnecessary features, like all those extra stages in the AWE games. Nobody plays an adaptation for originality. Now let's check out these absolute wastes of time. Longest tongue? That's disgusting. The very thought of this concept makes me sick to my stomach. I can't look at it any longer. That is also repulsive. Why is the big pink blob drinking this termite's fluid? I can't stand to look at it any longer. I'd sooner watch Bratz Rock Angels. For the record, I'm glad they took so good out of the PC game. Now this game is more like it. But it's something I do in real life every other week. I find less enjoyment in a simulation of it. Next. Boring Tetris ripoff. Next. Boring breakout ripoff. Next. Again, this is just something I can do in real life. Why would they make a game out of it? Gamers should get their lazy bodies outside and actually juggle some chainsaws. If they miss... Good. All of these games are terrible. Why couldn't Polly make me play a real game like Botocross or Operation Rail? Or even the AWE Avatar game? The only good game they've ever made. This is worse than watching the first three seasons of Winx Club. I can't stand having to play these stupid mm -hmm. god-awful games that people make. And frankly, I'm glad so many Flash games are hard to come by these days. 99% of them are absolute garbage and nobody should ever torture themselves by- <laughs> Ow, my head. Ugh, Polly turned me into Dark Lucy again. Great. Now how am I gonna get out of here this time? Over here. Huh? Joe? A key? But you're... Oh. Thank you, Joe. But by the way, did Polly seriously go out and buy a dog just for when she turns me into Dark Lucy? What did I say your name was again? Disgrace? <laughs> Okay, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, I'm going, see, I'm going, bye. I woke the same as any other day except a voice was in my head. It said, seize the day, pull the trigger, drop the blade, and watch the rolling heads. The day I tried to live. 
I stole a thousand burgers change and gave it to the rich, yeah. The day I tried to... Oh, is this thing on? <sighs> Disgrace.